feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign Welcome back to FAQ The Madness. We respectfully exercise our First Amendment right to publish interactions with government officials through the unbiased view of a camera. Let's jump into another rep. Recording. What's up, everybody? This is Fact the Madness. My name is Craig. I am here. You know, I, I, I'm not going to even lie. I, I watch a lot of YouTube. In fact, probably more than what I would like. So... I figure that if I'm going to spend the time, if I'm going to do the time, I might as well, or if I'm going to, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm saying if I'm going to put in the work to look at stuff, then I might as well let you guys see, get a small glimpse of what it looks like when I am, you know, my reactions to some of this stuff, you know. And I think it's interesting. I think it's always interesting when I come across another individual let's just say generally specific for example and he'll will he will be going through the things that he is watching and it happens to be some of the things that i am watching now we've all heard about echo chambers what exactly does it mean uh, echo chambers i think it means that when you are watching something or in a community sometimes the things that you are that you hear or that you see or that they let you see whoever they is. And in this case, we're talking about YouTube, the algorithm. They're presenting things that the, your commonality of peoples agree with and maybe will therefore propagate through the system, whatever that system is. And I, you, any of you who know me will, will learn that I am not a uh, conspiracy person fear monger um all of those kind of things fear is something that um i fear god uh, i'm not fear of death i do not fear death uh, my mother for the longest told us that tomorrow is not promised to us and and i believe that so it's going to happen there are some times where you think and you passionately wonder about the things that you will miss when you die but there's nothing that we can do about it we are all inching towards that end so to that end, what I want to say is that I have been slowly accumulating a, a uh, playlist. What I would like to do is I would like to go through these that I have accumulated. I think there might be 20, 20 or so. I think there's 19 maybe. Might, maybe 19. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can tell you exactly how many are. There are 17 and two that are unavailable. I don't know why it's unavailable, but we will go to through all of them. And I'll try to give you a kind of a reaction of, you know, my thoughts on the ones that, that stuck with me for some reason. That's kind of the whole thing. And I am calling this uh, playlist uh, Fact the Reaction. And with the hashtag Fact Reactions. If you are a fan of my, ch my channel, I'm going to ask that you like and share and consider subscribing because that's how I grow. And then if there's content like this that you like, then I'll do more of it. Of course, we have all the other things which are coming. Um, so that's where we're at. So let's start with number one. Who's the easiest race to trick? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you're talking about ethnic race. Yeah. So ethnic races, it's really difficult because it's based on education. Ah. But when it comes to race as a subcontext of nationalistic like yeah. pride, yeah, it's yeah. Americans. We're the easiest ones to trick. We're the most ignorant culture in the world for some reason i'm not surprised and i think we're maybe happy about that but let me just from my perspective let me tell you kind of like what this means to me in general now you have so i lived in utah for a very long time and utahns send people out to uh proselytize proselytize prostatalize <laughs> uh, to witness to people about the LDS church across the world. You know, somewhere in the Bible it talks about if, uh, you know, until everyone in the, in the, in the world has the chance to receive the gospel, uh, then, you know, then Jesus will wait until that time comes or something like that. So they go out and they, they witness and they, and they 
spread their religion, learn learn the language and all that stuff. Even in America, they do the same thing. So now, first of all, I believe everyone should live in a different country. I'm not really quite down with necessarily everybody serving in the military, but I think you should travel abroad for some length of time because we are an island on some level. And I think the thing that, that, that it causes is it does cause a little bit of ignorance. And I think that Americans on some level are ignorant. Now, compared to other uh, countries, Europeans, even Asians, um, you know, maybe not the Chinese, for example, but I mean, they are abroad as, as, it, as a, you know, they're, they're abroad as well. But I think that when, when we are in other nations, we just don't know. We, we have it so well in America. I mean, and I don't mean to make it sound stupid. I think ignorant is the, probably the best word. We just don't know what occurs around the globe. And then, but yet we kind of have this global mentality where we would like to impart our thoughts and our ideology amongst other people. So as far as race goes and the way he describes it, I kind of think, I kind of agree with what he's saying. That's fire. <laughs> that's number fire. one. We're always number one. Nobody can top us. And, and that's Man, a that's big so part of the reason. We're the top. best. Next video. How do you feel about white women wearing box braids? <laughs> Wait a second. Here we go. What? Oh, yeah. I don't have a problem with anybody wearing whatever style they want to wear as long as you know who to give the credit to. Give the credit to, so. Black women. Box braids come from black women. Absolutely. Okay, so how do you feel about uh, black women wearing like long wigs and things like that, trying to be white? I don't feel like a woman is trying to be. Not a bad question. Not a bad question, my man. Touche. I mean, and, and I'm trying to think in my mind how I feel about it. I, I, certainly, we do not have the monopoly on on hairstyles, culture, you know, those kind of things. People, they're stealing our stuff, braids and cornrows and all that stuff. And, you know, arguably, there are people, you know, Vikings, I guess, have some kind of thing with uh, hairstyles, uh, not hairstyles, but, uh, you know, box braids is what he's calling it. Anyway. We don't necessarily have the monopoly on it, women. Black, white, my, I feel my like, Nubian first queens. First of all, I feel like white people have culture. Mm -hmm. I, feel like, I feel like white people just generally do not have the culture to say that they can do different things. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. But black people, where we give the uniqueness mm -hmm. is because we can take different things and make it into our own style. So I don't think it's about being white. I think it's about being different. Now, if a white person wants to be different, that's fine. Even if you want to take credit, say, oh, well, we're the ones who are blonde. But if you really think about it, there are black people who do have naturally blonde hair. There now, is. okay, I, I probably know what he's going to say. That's anomalic. Is that what you say? It's an anomaly that black women have uh, blonde hair it's it's not the norm it is but that's a minority like you it can't a minority but that doesn't mean that you can't take the minority and say that you can't work. all right so next one i don't know if i should click or something but i already started playing but uh and i, I honestly i'm gonna tell you right now i, I am for taking care of people who participate in this kind of activity. There's no question. And I don't even know if I want this. This may not even appear, but I mean, to catch a predator. Oh, see, now I, I don't, this is one of those things. I know if you say certain words that YouTube kind of bans you, but this particular word I think is probably okay. So we're talking about an action, and uh, I think predation on any level is is bad. So let's see. What meeting today. I mean, uh, we're just recording for your sake. We're not going to hurt you, man. I promise. All right, we're not here to hurt you. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's plan Misty. Okay. How old's Misty? Uh, maybe fourteen. What do you What do you have in your pockets? I have uh, my wallet, my phone. What else? I don't have anything else. What were you supposed to bring? Uh, Again, man, I have it all. I 
I know what I was supposed to bring. What were you supposed to bring? She wanted me to bring lube and cotton. Okay, where's that at? I did not bring it. You didn't bring it? Cotton. Okay, is it in the car? Nope. Okay, so why didn't you bring it? You're going to do unprotected? Dude did not say cotton. <laughs> what was I going to do? I, I was like, we're just going to go see a movie. Well, you're here, man, and you didn't, you did, I I, you did say you were going to. I know I had said that. Okay. You I, did. And I know it was, it's wrong. So it's supposed to. You do know it's wrong? I do. And I mean, I just. It happened. Okay. This week's been really rough. And I had this fantasy. Blame it on the rain. He's blaming it on the week being rough. Uh, I don't know. My guy, that doesn't seem like the right answer. So I stopped here and I could have stopped on any one of those other frames. It would have been cool. I've I've mentioned before, first of all, everyone knows that my journey in this uh, whole endeavor of First Amendment auditing and those kind of things, you know, getting in front of the mic on any level um, occurred because of my mother. My mother has now been diagnosed with uh, early stages of, of, of Alzheimer's. And, you know, so I, I wanted to make sure that I took care of the record properly with 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 her and so i began i wanted to record and it just so happens that in the social security administration building they prohibit uh, recording in their spaces uh, videography photography etc and so i just began down the road of learning the laws and those kind of things another thing that i will just mention is that uh, i have had to go on occasion with my mother to um take her to the veterans administration's um hospital she gets care there, and she's been getting care there for uh, for a, a number of years now. When I last took her there, she, my mother is a cancer survivor. When I was about, um, I think it was my senior year. When I was in my senior year, I was dry, riding my bike, probably after school, because I remember I was riding my bike, going to work, I think. And my mother was, like, coming the opposite direction, and she said, Craig, I need to talk to you. So I turned around. You know, my mother says, jump. I say, how high? Um, even to this day, she tells me that she'll whip me till, till I'm 10 days older than Santa Claus. So, uh, but I turned around, we got home and she told me that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. It was a devastating moment. I didn't think that was going to make me emotional. <clears throat> it was a devastating moment, but we got through it and one thing that she talks about is i remember when she like we were in the in the store one time and she had been wearing these hats and occasionally a wig sometimes she'll wear a wig she's wearing these hats and they look cool and scarves and those kind of things and we were we were somewhere else we were in kmart i think it was because that time kmart was going my mom was like my head is itching she was trying to figure out what she's going to do and she took off her her hat and she was completely bald at that time. And, you know, she was like, are you are you ashamed of me and this and this and that? But before that, I remember when she when her hair first started cutting, coming off and I used to cut my own hair and other people's head hair. Uh, I think I charged like maybe three dollars or something like that. And she's like, son, I want you to cut my hair off. Oh, my God. We sat there and I was cutting her hair off and we were crying. Uh, but like I said, we got through it. Uh, and so to see this young lady go from bald and all the kinds of things and the support of this person. And I think the reason why I started that story in the first place was my mother, when we were in the VA hospital, she told the story of how when she was on chemotherapy that I laid on the floor and made sure she was OK uh, throughout through the night because she was throwing up and all those kind of things. It made her very weak. So kudos to you, mom, for surviving. I love you with all my heart. So. <clears throat> Whew. That was kind of surprising. Damn. Confucius, don't confuse. Bravo. Let me explain. The object of this game, let's all play the same. 
Don't question the madness. Embrace the change. The superior man seeks truth. That's his aim. Okay. He who knows all the answers. Where the hell do I start? First of all, there should be no celebration of your circumstances. I mean, other than the fact that you are living to see another day, that may be what you should be celebrating. But why are you doing this in, on camera? It's not like you're supposed to have the camera, are you? I mean, it, do I not know something? Has has things changed so drastically that you're allowed to be having cameras in uh, in prison or jail, wherever they are? And uh, particularly with weapons. Those are clearly weapons. They are not eating utensils. Dumbasses. Didn't even, didn't even notice that they're smoking on something. Likely not uh, legal. Come on now. Be better, do better. I mean, open up a book. My God. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to start this over, but this is kind of a cool thing or not. But I've been moving this cursor across the whole screen or on the bottom and this flops up and whatever and press play and stop and those kind of things and I didn't realize that I could just hit the oh, if I click on it that I can just hit the space bar My mans. And and this is a new thing for me, so I'm just trying to figure out the productions of of it all. So hard to maintain. Okay. The the, I, the forgive you I, get sentenced in the state of Florida. I kind of I kind of forgot what she was talking about, so let's start over. Sorry. Florida. The same day you're sentenced, they pre calculate how much is owed from that second to your expected release date. So I was completely shocked that a judge could modify every term in my packet, in my court case, but you charged me for a cell that I didn't occupy? While you charged me for supervision? While you charged me for everything else? At that point, I felt like the humility that I had tried so hard to maintain, the, the, the forgiveness that I had tried so hard to maintain, I felt so tricked and so fooled. There is no ladder. Hmm. So, uh, like, so what exactly is she saying? And, and I, I think I understand. So, what she's saying is that the that they calculate how much money is owed for the term that her prison sentence was determined to be. The entirety of it, right? But then if you get on probation or whatever and the judge changes those terms, you know, then they then they charge her for supervision and, you know, uh, all the other things that come along. Drug testing, for example. So what she's saying is she realized that that being the case, that there is that they that they're setting you up for not succeeding because they, I mean, I, I mean, I, I get what she's saying, but I think that that might be just a, an accounting thing. But I guess if you figured out that they, because on some level, think about this. If you knew that, uh, that there was a cost associated with a person being in prison, why would you want them to get out? I mean, if you follow the numbers, right, people talk about, you know, how often black people are incarcerated and they take plea deals and those kind of things. And then you will hear other people saying that they are not counting the numbers correctly. I have never heard that they are counting white people as black people or, or brown people at least or something so that the numbers are skewed. I've never heard that. And I would be interesting, interested in finding out if that's the case. Now, you know, I do a show on Tuesdays with generally specific and, uh, 
and I know that might be in his vein of interest. So we might uh, might be some might be a topic that we might look into. I don't know. What do you think, G- GS? What do you think? All right. Let's see if I can. There with okay. them, they're not. They there is nothing that you can do, apparently, that will ever truly allow you to be a second chance anything. There isn't. Hmm. And they make sure of it. All right. So let's see. The last of the people moving out. It's so sad to see them. These people are going really fast. Damn. <laughs> so now this is just maybe this is just my nature. And I, I don't know what it's called. Let me look it up real quick. Uh, what is it called? Mm. I'm going to look it up here. Is it called uh, Geo? What is it called? When you determine a location by clues. Determine an exact location using location on a map map from picture. Oh. Mm. All right. So it's saying geotagging can help use users find a wide variety of location specific information from a device. For instance, someone can find images taken near a given location by entering latitude and longitude coordinates into a suitable image search engine. So I'm talking about even further than that. And this says, I just noticed this, which is another fascinating thing. Can you find a precise location where a photo is taken? I just saw somewhere in there artificial intelligence can find your location in photos that to me is fascinating but i think it's an app so i don't know put it in the comments if you know the app that you can use or maybe it's a game that's what i think it is this is one guy it's, it's a guy on you on youtube that i've seen where he Somebody asked a question and he's like, oh, yeah, he t- this is the grass and this is the shadow and it's at this time and whatever, blah, blah. And then he zooms in and he finds the exact location and mat- matches it up. It's a game. So I'm going to find out what that game is. And if you know, then put it in the comments for me. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you. But all that to say, that's what I thought about when I first started. That's what I thought about when I first saw this is like, one, I want to know what it looks like now. So that would be cool if we could figure out where this place is. Because it doesn't say our entire neighborhood was evacuated. Uh, Maybe I should look further. So I'm going to. We're still at it. We've been here all day. Our construction is like a year, year and a half. Look at this shit, man. Mm. I think that was an address. I think I saw an address. At least a number on a house. So... Memo to self, this might be another project. Okay, next video.
Now, uh, this is my first time doing a video like this. I don't know if I've laughed or not laughed, you know, try not to laugh kind of thing. I'm not doing that at all. In fact, like I said, the reason why I'm, I started even thinking about it, the impetus for this, uh, this kind of exercise is that it interests me why I'm presented with certain information. And it even interests me even further what fascinates me about something. Why did I decide to put it in a playlist? And why am I sharing it with you guys? Now, I'm going to learn a little bit more about myself as I sh if I share my thoughts, which, you know, at the end of the day, don't we want to kind of figure out what we're thinking and what makes us tick, so to speak? Um, and so why not share? You know, I have the ability to do it, so that's what I'm doing. Don't judge me, man. Don't judge me. We buy three times the amount of Mercedes Benzes as Caucasians, and we don't even have one third of the wealth of white folks. Because Negroes love status symbols, and we love to look rich even if we are not. And that's one of the reasons why. You ain't never lied. That is so damn true. Start this over. He is telling, speaking FAQs, facts. You know, we buy three times the amount of Mercedes Benzes as Caucasians, and we don't even have one third of the wealth of white folks. Because Negroes love status symbols, and we love to look rich even if we are not. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't buy a new car until my 1995 GMC Jimmy died on 95 South. You said, you a whole psychologist. Why you ain't got no new car yet? For what? Who I got to prove something to. And I got that engine replaced, I got the trans replaced, and then one day driving back from speaking in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, back home to Philly, my engine died. And she would not wake back up. I tried to give her mouth to mouth. That's when I had to buy a new car. <laughs> one of the best. <laughs> Say, I tried to give her mouth to mouth. Now, I am not even going to lie. I have driven some cars until they blew up. Now, mind you, some of it was because my ass didn't know. I, I didn't do the right upkeep on cars. No cap, right? But then the others is that I bought cars that didn't cost me a whole lot of money. In fact, I bought this. One of my favorite cars was a... Um, crown victoria it was white i bought it for eight hundred dollars and i used it for two seasons of so i say in two seasons but i delivered pizzas in it and i went through two christmases and two new year's eves and i would get fat tips during that time so basically it was one year because i started around that time and then to, went to the next one and then it and then it blew up and it was uh i remember i would have to uh put antifreeze in it and it kept leaping, leaking all the way through. I spent, I don't know, I, I buy probably at least one or two bottles a week. But uh, it was a hoopty. It was the things we can do for our children is to liberate them from compulsive spending and the need to have in order to feel they are somebody. Okay, next video. Hey, y'all, let's start with just a little butter. If you were counting, you were counting right. 16 sticks a lot of, of butter. butter. On medium heat, you want to melt your butter. Once it's melted... Now, uh, if you guys remember, there is a an episode of uh, Frequently Asked Questions with Fact and Madness and Generally Specific, and we talk about me going to the store and buying margarine because my wife, my then fiancé, now wife, uh, makes sure that I that I buy, and these are not a sponsor, I can't believe it's not butter, I like country crock. And I went through the process of figuring out the bad stuff to the, the grams and all that stuff. But 16 sticks of butter, good Lord, that, that just, that looks delicious from the very beginning. You want to add your seasons like salt, pepper, garlic powder, thyme, and parsley. Grab a spoon, give it a big old stir. Once it's all mixed together, you want to slowly mm. drop in your steaks into their butter bag. I'm, I am having a steak tonight. I am not even going to lie. I am cooking steak tonight. And as an addendum to this video, I'm going to post the image, date, time, date, and stamped for whenever this video is. I am eating a steak tonight. Yeah. Then you want to grab the lid, put it on top of your dish, and then you want to pop it in the oven at 175 for 40 minutes. Mm. Once it's done, you want to remove the steak from <laughs> its butter bath delicious. and let it rest for 5 to 10 minutes. Wow, look how good the steak's already starting to look. Then you want to salt and pepper both sides of the steak because you want to grab a scalding hot skillet and you want to sear both sides of the steak. 
I would highly recommend to get some of that liquid gold from the butter bath and season your steak while it's searing. Y'all, this is my all-time favorite way of cooking a steak. Look how perfect. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. All right. So next video. Hey, y'all, let's start with just a little. Confucius, don't confuse us, let me explain The object of this game, let's all play the same Don't question the madness, embrace the change the superior man seeks truth, that's his aim He who knows all the answers ain't been asked enough Life's like a puzzle, you gotta call its bluff Yes, fact the madness, let the truth guide us In the arena of debate, we'll all rise up Question the madness, oh don't you see In this crazy world it's the only key To find the truth, the answers we seek So let's all rise up and break this winning streak <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to see what that uh, what that sounds like, but uh, next video. <laughs> that was fun. Peace. This is your gonna teach your son the show, and I want to know I love where you're from. How do y'all pronounce this word? Is it? I love this guy. I really do. I, I, first of all, I, I mean, if you watch his videos. He goes by Summit Show. I don't know what his real name is or if he has another channel out there. I haven't really looked into it, but I probably will find out. And I, like I said, I'm a person who puts links uh, to other people's videos. So I would like for you to check out his stuff because he's very entertaining. And also, he is clearly brilliant. I think he might be a Harvard professor. That's how cool this cat is. Anyway, he keeps it real. And this is one of the things that he that he does. He, he talks about language. He's a language professor. I don't know exactly what his title is, so I don't want to I don't want to miscall it. But you need to go check out his channel, Sun Michelle. And I say syrup. Is it A syrup, B syrup, or C none of the above? Well, you know what? Maybe I I mean I might do both syrup, syrup. Can I have some syrup, syrup? I mean, I'm a little bit on on the verge of both of them. So let's just start from the very beginning again. Come on. Peace. This is your Gullah teacher son, Michelle. And I want to know Gullah? where you're from. How do y'all pronounce this word? Is it A, syrup, B, syrup, or C, none of the above? Respond with the letter of your selection and the city where you're from. Hey. Or the city wherever you got your paid, accent. Take money, cash Trying to see something we see the set. That's last we out ya. I love, I love his statement. We out ya. We out ya. We out ya. <laughs> anyway, that's him. That's brilliant. All right, next video. A mother is a son's first true love. A son, especially that first son, is a mother's last. That's uh, getting choked up. Amen. So, Amen. I mean, I was everything. I'm my mom's first and last son. So I get it, my brother. I get it. I, lo I love Denzel Washington. I think he's one of the coolest, smartest, brightest, um, wise men uh, that black people have on any level to look up to in the position that he is. I mean, and he will probably tell you that he maybe he's embraced being a uh, a role model of sorts. And he asks people uh, challenging questions when he when he greets him. I've seen a couple of videos, but 
I think he's a really cool man. Bravo. Okay, next one. There was a real fear that if you let blacks get control, everything would change. With some people, there was no idea that there would be any fairness or any democracy or anything decent, well-run, city government, county government, whatever. It was like, if this happens, we're lost. And it was just a terrible fear. Politicians, hmm. even people who knew better, would have been willing to go further personally or to have the state move forward, were always bound by fear of not getting reelected. And so, really, people who knew better just stuck with racism for political reasons is what I think. But a lot of it, just in average citizens, was just that people didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to help. There's a number of things I can say about that. Fear is... I mean, it destroys so many things. If you, if you operate in a spirit of fear, you're not, you are not operating optimally. I tell you that for one, you are not operating optimally. If you operate in a spirit of fear, that's one thing. And I don't care what it is that I talk about or what I promote or any of those things. I want to eliminate fear. Uh, you know, race war. I, and I, it made me think about something is that uh, is like a civil war. Because remember the uh, remember the Titans or something like that, the football thing with uh, Denzel Washington, ironically. And he takes him. He, they take him on a long um, uh, run to this field. It was a battlefield. He talks about the brothers fighting brothers and those kind of things. And we all are Americans here in America. Not all of us are brothers. And the, cra the, the crazy thing is, is will you align by race or by blood? And which would be stronger? I mean, I think it's a fascinating question to think about. Obviously, they say blood is thicker than water, right? And maybe an American is thicker than, say, an, uh, you know, another country, a con some kind of communist or whatever. But uh, what about brothers and sisters? Because once you get to a certain point, like when, when you're... You know, doomed to fight against each other. Are you fighting for the land? Are you fighting for money? Are you fighting for security, safety, all those kind of things? Are you fighting for your family? Uh, or maybe the way of living? So, and, you know, people talk about cultures that they're the same or that they're different. Um, uh, race wars, I mean, I think that's just a fear kind of thing, a way to further divide us. Uh, we are all human beings and we happen to be Americans uh, and you know I say at the end of some of my things whether you be on the right side or the left side as far as I'm concerned I need for you and I want for you I hope wish and pray as Tyrant Terminator would say is that you meet me here somewhere in the middle because look look how strong that is right I mean if I try to separate my hands and I'm squeezing at this point in the middle there's a lot of power there but obviously, if I'm here and I'm here, I mean, you can come forcefully together and create some kind of force. But uh, if you gently come and grasp your hands together somewhere in the middle, there's a lot of power in that. And that's what I think about when I when I when I have a discussion with people, when I think about ideas and I discuss ideas, I'm thinking about trying to get to a place where we can both agree and then maybe dissect the differences and still continue to be at a place where we can continue to agree even if you're even if you're agreeing only on the uh on the solution to the problem you may not uh, you may not agree on the problem or how to fix the problem but you may have to agree on what it looks like when it's fixed and that's an interesting powerful ass thought i think Maybe that's why I came up with it. <laughs> all right. All that from that. From nothing. All right. So that is the end of my... And I don't know. I, I honestly do not know how long I've been working on that. But I don't know how many views. I, I, I want to probably set a goal for this video. I mean, it may not get that many views at all. I, I, I'd be happy if it got somewhere around where I normally get, but like, I, I need for you all to let me know that you appreciate this particular kind of content.
right? That I, that I accumulate some stuff that came into my feed. Um, I wanted to talk about it a little bit. I may have pondered on it right in the very beginning, but I decided that by me doing something, I actively put it away on the side so I can come back to it, view them all together in one sitting, and then give it back to you with some of my thoughts. Uh, and I'm putting it in its own particular playlist. And it's going to be called, I think I'm going to call it, um, Fact the Reaction. So if you like this kind of content and you want more of this content, let me know. Put a like uh, and maybe even a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. My name is Craig. And like I've said before, this is I am Fact the Madness. And like I've said before, if you are on, whether you be on the left hand, whether you be on the left or you be on the right, as far as I'm concerned, all I want is for us to meet somewhere here in the middle. And that's a fact. Do I, did I say, and that's a fact, fact, that's a fact, that's a fact. Anyway, appreciate you stopping by. Take care. Peace. Thank you for watching. If you have a video you'd like for us to cover, use the submit link in the description or pinned comment. If you enjoyed this one, consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Be sure to check out all of the other content we have for your edutainment. We will continue to respectfully exercise our First Amendment rights and published interactions we have with government officials. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment. It's the easiest way for you to let us know your thoughts about our channel. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement. The top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place. No, this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh.